chuckle nuts. Hello, gamers. Uh, sorry for the general audio downgrade, but I got a new phone and it has a USB-C outlet, not a lightning outlet. So uh, my, my old mics are designed for lightning outlets. Uh, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of shit out of luck there. I don't exactly have $50, you know, just, just laying around to get a new mic. Um, so I've been gone so long. Uh, this is my third attempt recording this video and it's slowly making me think that, uh, maybe this video idea wasn't so, wasn't as great as I thought it was, but I'm still going to do it. I've also been spending a lot of time uh, working to acquire my It's Time to Make Them Pay Tim Misney clock. You know what I do. Now, I'm sure everyone is familiar with Hammurabi. You know, it, the only, the only like little, little, little scraps of Mesopotamian history we were taught in school included the fucking Euphrates River song, uh, something about ziggurats and Hammurabi's code. That's all we're taught. I, I want you to forget the code for a second. For, fuck the code. Fuck the code. We don't need the code. Yeah? We don't need crime. What's that? I don't pay taxes. Uh, Hammurabi wasn't just a statesman. He was a conqueror, which is why he's on this channel, because that's all I seem to give a shit about. Not only was he a conqueror, but Hammurabi also had an arch nemesis. And this arch nemesis of his, Shamshi Adad, was both kind of a herald for Hammurabi's conquest and sort of an, well, not an anti-king. Hammurabi was the anti-king to Shamshi Adad. So this video is going to be both about Shamshi Adad and Hammurabi because we don't have enough records to give an extended look at the life of either one. I love, I love being into Bronze Age history. It's so rewarding. But uh, before we get into it, uh, I have to ask that you uh, please hit the buttons, uh, you know, the ones to subscribe, like, uh, leave a comment. Uh, yeah, it'd be really cool if you did. Uh, and if you want to see more, yeah, I got a lot of history stuff coming down the pipeline. So if you like history and you like my particular brand of uh, brain damage, Feel free to feel free to hit the hit the subscribe button and notifications, so you know when my next breakdown comes out. And by breakdown, I mean mental breakdown, not not the normal kind, because I'm not like the other history YouTubers. So for some context, uh, Mesopotamia has been living in the shadow of Sargon's Akkadian Empire for about like over 500 years at this point. In the wake of the empire's collapse, uh, city-states have been fighting and squabbling endlessly to see who would become the next king of the world. Which to them, the world was just Mesopotamia. So um, when people call themselves king of the four corners of the universe, king of the world, king of all, what they mean is king of the river, uh, of the Dank River Valley. <sighs> While there was an attempt at a short-lived Neo-Sumerian disaster empire, a la the Byzantines, based out of Ur, no one would really be able to step up to the plate until the 1800s BC. This person who would step up to the plate is Shamshi Adad. Now, Shamshi Adad's name, if we split it in two, or we have Shamshi, which is the name of the sun god, uh, and Shams still means sun in Arabic today, which is pretty cool. And then you have Hadad, who is the uh, god of lightning. And you might know him as a uh, Baal Hadad, Baal Shaman, or Baal. Or you might be a disgusting weeb who has contributed to ruining all of my Google searches. Anyway, the only, um, <laughs> the only piece of like visual depiction of Shamshi Hadad that we have is an unfinished etching that was supposed to go on a seal. I don't know why that's funny to me, it just is. Uh, so Shamshi Adad is credited with creating the Old Assyrian Empire. I don't know why it's called the Old Assyrian Empire because it was not really Assyrian at all. A and he was not the king of Assyria to start out with. He was the, he inherited the throne of Akalatum, a completely different city-state. 
So I'm not sure why we call his empire the Assyrian Empire. Anyway, uh, Shamshi Adad's rule gets off to kind of a rough start, and by rough I mean this guy Naram Sim from Eshnuna, who, which is a different city. There's a lot of city states. There's so many fucking city states. Naram Sin from Eshnuna comes in and fucking like. He, he fucks up a Kalatum, and uh, Shamshi Adad is forced to flee to where else but Babylon, home city of Hammurabi. Now, during this time, uh, Shamshi Adad was probably a contemporary of Hammurabi's father um, and would have met young Hammurabi uh, while he was staying in Babylon. Now, eventually, Shamshi Adad managed to get his kingdom back, uh, not by fighting Naram Sin, but by waiting for Naram Sin to keel over and die. To sort of make up for the embarrassment that he just kind of waited around to get his kingdom back, Shamshi Adad goes on this string of uh, battle campaigns and manages to actually do pretty well for himself. Uh, conquering a ton of the cities around northern Mesopotamia, including Asur. Now, Asur is the city that the Assyrian Empire is named after. And you might be thinking, oh, that's why they call it the Assyrian Empire, because it has Asur in it. And maybe he made it his capital. Shamshi Adad did not make Asur his capital. In fact, he conquered a different city called Shekna and made that his capital and created a new kingdom not called the Assyrian Kingdom or the Kingdom of Asur, but the Kingdom of Upper Mesopotamia, which was uh, Shamshi's own like Akkad, but with blackjack and hookers. Pretty sure that he didn't call it Upper Mesopotamia, but I'm pretty sure he didn't call it Asur or Assyria either. After establishing his kingdom, uh, Shamshi's next target for expansion was Mari, that controlled a lot of the trade routes between uh, the Levant, Mesopotamia, and Anatolia. Problem though, uh, Mari controls a lot of the trade routes between Anatolia, the Levant, and Mesopotamia. So they're rich as fuck. So Shamshi Adad was not exactly in a position to go and directly confront Mari. Hey, look! A teenager! Until Yahma, uh, Yatun, Yah, Yahdun Lim uh, is stabbed to death by his servants. Did Shamshi Adad have a part to play in it? Pro probably, yeah, probably. Zimri Lim, uh, uh, Yadun Lim's successor, is forced to flee to a neighboring kingdom called Yahmad, uh, a Semitic kingdom that's based out of Aleppo. Hey, hey, I've seen this one. I've seen this one. This is a classic. In the meantime, uh, having just captured Mari, Shamshi Adad puts his sons Ishmael Dagon and Yasma Adad on the thrones of Ikalatum and Mari, respectively. And I want to pause here to do a little. Um, so we don't have a lot of records from this time period, right? Because it's old as fuck. Um, but we do have some records, specifically of letters between uh, Shamshi Adad and his youngest son Yasma Adad. I think these letters are very funny. Let, let me just let me just read you a couple quotes uh, of what Shamshi Adad takes takes the time out of his day while on campaign to send to his son. Quote: Are you a child, not a man? Have you no beard on your chin? Unquote. Quote: While here your brother is victorious, down there you lie among the women. Unquote. In English and without any context, uh, these aren't that funny, but these are part of letters where Shamshi Adad goes out of his way to insult Yasma Adad for being a disappointment. Reminds me of my parents. Anyways, Shamshi eventually declares himself uh, king of the world, like Sargon, now controlling much of Syria, parts of Anatolia, and Upper Mesopotamia in full. Uh, his reign is generally characterized by having, yeah, by great organization and having a very firm hand on all matters of state, 
including high policy to the appointing of officials and the dispatchment of provisions. Uh, Shamshi had a proclivity for spies and propaganda that he often used to win over rival cities. Uh, and he allowed conquered territories to maintain some of their earlier practices, but this is not an act of benevolence. This is an act of, I have a large multi-ethnic empire and I'm not going to make everyone convert to my culture because otherwise they're going to rebel. Shamshi Adad continued to strengthen his kingdom throughout his life, uh, but as he got older, the, but as he got older, due to how entrenched and involved he was in uh, the work in the minutia of his own government, uh, the state became more vulnerable the older he got. Now let's rewind back in time a little bit and get to Hammurabi. Now. Babylon is not a new city-state at this point. However, uh, as a player on the uh, political stage, it is relatively new. Babylon got started as a kingdom founded by the Amorites, uh, who invaded Mesopotamia after the fall of the Third Dynasty of Ur, about 400 years before this point, depending on which chronology you use. A really fun fact about studying Mesopotamian history is that there might be two different versions of how all the history went down because there are two different chronologies. There are two different timelines and we don't know which one's the real one. We, we have an idea of which one is probably more real than the other, but I love being a Bronze Age history fan. It's so rewarding. Anyway, Babylon gets its start as a minor Amorite kingdom. Uh, and Hammurabi's father is the is really the first one to put it onto the world stage. Um, Hammurabi's father has gone and conquered a few of the minor city-states in the area, so Babylon's like Babylon's got some buffer room between its borders and, you know, the city itself. However, uh, Hammurabi's father leaves Hammurabi in kind of a uh, shitty geopolitical situation. Starting in the east, we have Elam, uh, who is a threat to pretty much all of Mesopotamia because they are a big, scary mountain kingdom uh, in the Zagros Mountains, which are on the um, western edge of what is now Iran. We have Eshnuna to the north. And we have Larsa controlling the river delta uh, to the Persian Gulf in the south. This is not a great place to be. Hammurabi's first few years of rule are spent turtling and building up the city's defenses and temples in preparation to face the threats surrounding him. Because, duh. But after these few years, uh, and Babylon is sufficiently able to defend itself, and, and I just interpret that as Babylon, you know, having walls or not having walls, because I'm not really sure what else there would be to do. That said, uh, pretty much right on time, uh, the kingdom of Elam, to the east, if you recall, uh, launches an invasion into Mesopotamia. This is not their first, and I don't think it's their last. Elam annihilates Eshnun. using that city as a base from which to attack into the rest of Mesopotamia. In order to have a chance of establishing that foothold, however, uh, Elam has to try and get the other Mesopotamian states to not pay attention to it. In order to meet this end, they attempt to uh, play Babylon and Larsa off each other, trying to start a war between the two. However, Hammurabi and the king of Larsa discover uh, this attempt, so they ally and attack Eshnunna once again, stomping it into the ground for the second time. However, Lars's contributions to the campaign are lacking, to say the least. So Hammurabi shows up in Larsa and goes, yo man, what the fuck? The king of Larsa says, suck it, skill issue. So Hammurabi kills Larsa. And then he takes control of all of Southern Mesopotamia. So now you have the king of Upper Mesopotamia led by Shamshi Adad, uh, which is a pretty sprawling empire. Uh, and you have the Lower Mesopotamians led by Hammurabi, 
uh, and you have a crushed and stomped Eshnuna. Now, as I said before, uh, by this point in time, uh, Shamshi Adad is ailing when it comes to his health. And in response to that, Yahmad and inexplicably Eshnuna, who is still alive at this point, somehow, both decide to attack the edges of the empire. And Shamshi Adad, realistically here, is trying to maintain a multi-ethnic empire that has no real sense of cohesion that becomes more and more of a chore the older he gets because he's so personally involved. And we finally get to answer the question as to why this empire was call is called the Old Assyrian Empire in the history books, and that is because his son Ishmael Dagon takes the throne of Assyria when he ascends to power uh, and takes over the kingdom of Upper Mesopotamia from his father when Shamshi Adad unfortunately keels over and dies. And Yasma Adad, the failure, is ousted from his throne on Mari uh, by Zimri Lim as he retakes the kingdom. And then, there, in the southern horizon, we see Hammurabi. Hammurabi was actually supposed to ally with Mari and Yahmad to fight the Assyrians, and they are Assyrians now. After killing Eshnuna for the third and hopefully last time, Hammurabi turns on Mari and sacks the city, presumably killing Zimri Lim. Honestly, probably a smart move, because the last time that exact set of events happened, we got Shamshi Adad, so... Don't blame him. Anyway, Hammurabi then enters a protracted, almost sort of cold war with Ishmael Dagon, where both kings are competing in an arms race, kind of. They're competing in a race to get as many alliances from minor states as possible. Sort of a uh, sort of a weird reflection of the whole like hearts and minds and preventing the domino effect of like communism uh, from spreading back in back in the Cold War, which I find to be kind of funny. But eventually, one man's name is all over the history books. The other, you probably haven't heard of until this video. Hammurabi wins and subjugated Assyria, creating the first Babylonian empire and uniting all of Mesopotamia under the king of the four corners of the universe since Sargon. We don't really count the third dynasty of war. At least I don't. However, like many great conquerors, upon his death, Hammurabi's empire begins to quickly unravel under the rule of his son and further descendants, opening the doors for the Kassites and eventually the Neo-Assyrian empire. Some, some uh, foreshadowing for a possible sequel that I will hopefully get out before Halloween. But yes, that was uh, a history of both Shamshi Adad and Hammurabi, the two kings of Mesopotamia uh, post Sargon. I hope you enjoyed. If you know anything else about this topic, I'd be super happy to read your comments about it. Um, I wanted to write a book about this time period a while ago because I thought it was an interesting personal story uh, and something that is pretty rare to come across in Bronze Age history, considering the fact that we have so few historical records. If you want to see more stuff like this or you want to see, I don't know, I did a video on the Bronze Age collapse. I did one on the Warring States period. Anyways, uh, if you want more history stuff from me, I have those. I have a lot more stuff planning. I'm planning to make. Uh, including a uh, history of the Neo-Assyrian Neo Empire, uh, who were basically like Bronze Age Nazis, and the uh, first dynasty of the Holy Roman Empire, because I think it's a cool time period. I also do some world building stuff. I am planning to write a book about uh, a like medieval America that got bombed back into the into the Iron Age because I thought it'd be a cool idea, and I have three videos about it that are doing pretty well. That's that's it. That's it for me. I, I'm done now. I'm done like Ashnuna. Bye.